And looking at the road department, it'll be page 14 on the appropriations listing. Um, on your thicker printout, that's your payroll. We've already gone over that. If there's any changes, it'd be on the log. Um, if there were changes related to payroll, it would be on the log. And uh, we haven't done any road fund changes since since you were, your original copy. Um, it's got the and these are rounded up, so they're not absolutely to the dollar. The engineer salary sixty six thousand four hundred, assistant. 114700 that's to um, that includes vacation payout for the current supervisor that is retiring <coughs> secretaries is 27900 part time 37500 those have been used in the past couple of years for the mower following behind the mowers <coughs> Did you say part time? Uh huh. Okay, that that's uh, on the first budget we got, and the second budget you said. Is there any other changes besides in that fourth line? There's, I mean, there's there is a change from the first budget. You mentioned there wasn't any changes. There's a change right there. Okay. I mean, it's just a hundred dollars, but that's for the rounding. Okay. There may be one or two like that. DLG okay. recommended. But that's, a, we that's round on, up. only just a round change. Yeah. Okay. Yes. If you okay. see any like that, that's okay. what it is. Okay. That's the only change. Okay. Where it was, if it had been $37,410, the prior original copy would have rounded down to four hundred, but DLG recommended we round up. So anything over four hundred would round up to five hundred. Office supplies. 3,600. Employee training, 5,000. Travel, 3,000. Office equipment, 7,500. Labor, eight, 875,100. Is that more employees or? That includes the pay scale. For the people retiring? It. Um, it does have some for, we've got two or so three we're re retiring out of we've labor. Got three. Three that's retiring out of labor. And then we're going to replace three. Yeah. And Wendy also um, proposed a pay scale change that is reflected in this as well. Um, in the past, all of our guys got paid the same amount, whether you're an operator or you flagged or followed the mowers or whatever. Right. And so um, I implemented a pay scale change where whatever they're qualified for or if they've went on and done like pesticide training, they get so much more an hour or if they've got their class A CDLs instead of just their Bs, then they get so much more an hour. Which that just resulted in a eighteen thousand dollar is all that is over all those employees. Um, you can look on page sixty nine of the the new payroll summaries, and it it's got we've got about Where are four, you? page sixty nine in the payroll sheets. The far right column is the hourly rate that that salary is based off of. Mm. Mm -mm. I can't either. So that that um, in what labor salaries are, you've got fifteen thousand eight hundred and fifty three dollars worth of payout to employees. Uh, 
Uh, what? what 12,500 12, of that is gross payroll. Which one just right off the top have, have increased in here? Which salaries? Mm -hmm. um, there's. You said it's sorry. just based off of what all they're qualified for. Okay. It, it's several of them. Yeah. It's, um, just to give you a reference point for that right hand column, gives you the the new hourly rate that we, that she has proposed. Um, they were all at nineteen thirteen this fiscal year minus. Slim, slim. Mm -hmm. And and the new uh, system is based on for. I mean the. What the license they have and the license and uh, like the training that they've got extra and if they're an operator, heavy equipment operator, or if they're just a truck driver or mower, then they would be base pay. So the new base alone would be 1953. Well, so a 1953 is employed with none of that, okay? That's just the bare minimum, like if they've just right. got their- With the 2.1% okay. increase. Yeah. That's probably a fair. Mm-hmm. State paving projects, $269,059. That's the numbers we get from Michael Oliver for the flex funds from the state. Paving is budgeted at 625,000. Pest control, 1,000. Other services, 800. Building repairs, 50,000. Obviously that's not going to, to fix all the damages at the road department. Um, we have already received a good piece of the money from their, from the insurance for the repairs there. So we probably need to look at adjusting that line item. Well, that, that's my the question I had. I had that mark from the first budget is, uh, what have we received from the insurance company for damages? We were supposed to or receive what do we about seventy-five percent is what we were supposed to get up front, and I think that's around one hundred and twenty-three thousand. Um, one hundred and sixty-four is, you know, they'll come back and reinspect and see if we used all that amount. We've got to track that, but um, that's what we could get <coughs> potentially. Um, well, then, then but 123, I believe, is what we should have already got checks for for the 75 percent up front. So we, we're getting 120. We've got 123 already, but we're just budgeting 50,000 to replace. But those um, that, that was an early number. We didn't have a quote at that time. Yeah. Okay. And we still really and, don't know as far as the expense because. Um, Tegenbrock's supposed to be trying to get me some prices on the pole barns being replaced, and then we decided to go on and add on, do an addition to our our shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said that. Right. And um, we, of course, that will be open next week in court, so I don't really have prices on that yet either. So that that fifty thousand dollars, I was, I just had it marked because it was forty two thousand dollars, and I understood where that came from, but I. Just didn't understand where we were going to. Uh, I knew the loss was much greater than that. Right. In this time of year, dealing with things like that are difficult because it, the money's in this fiscal year. It needs to roll into next fiscal year unless we get a lot of work done prior to. And I mean, it's still, we've still got plenty of time to get at least some of the work done or materials bought or something. So it's kind of a, a difficult time of year to be transitioning those kind of repairs in that great of amount. The pole barn can't be repaired, can it? Where it picked the post up, it's got to be took down. Um, that's kind of being debated right now. 
Yeah, we thought at first that it's going to have to be torn down, but Tech and Brock's crew thinks that they can salvage it. So I don't know if they can do that, putting it back to cold. So that's something that we're supposed to meet with Cat um, this week on to see what his opinion is and if <coughs> if they would approve it to go back to cold or if he thinks it needs to be torn down. It'd save us a lot of money if we could repair it. Sure. None of the rafters are messed up. It's just you know, where it's pulled and twisted the post and putting it back to cold was the main thing. And all the metal, instead of being screwed on, was nailed on. So you can't salvage it either. Is that, is that insurance, what kind of insurance do we have? Is that replacement hey. cost or just depreciation? I you think know. it's replacement cost. We have replacement Keiko. cost with Keiko. I'm pretty sure, is that right, Em? I think what, that is what they do, is replacement. Okay. It didn't look that bad, but it looked like it'd be difficult to, you know, to get it's, those posts back down where they belong and li everything <laughs> lined back up. And I'm not sure what code, exactly what code would be on a pole building like that. Yeah, I know that they have to be, all the posts have to be put in concrete and they have to be anchored in correctly. And right. you could, certainly you can dig around them and pour them in concrete if you can get them, get yeah. everything leveled back out. Gas and fuel, 175,000. Road materials, 150,000. Pipe, culvert, sewers, um, 100,000. Back, back to the road material, uh, there is a $200,000 difference in, in last year, or what was the, what was the deal? Well, in the past, um, any time it was rainy or anything, they stockpiled. We had a, a lot of rock there on site, and we haven't been doing that to try to cut back on cost. Uh, we try to keep enough there where if we're caught out on the weekend and need some rock that we've got plenty for that, but we try not to stockpile. Just difference all the time. in the inventory. Yes. Okay. okay. Time materials twenty thousand, salt thirty thousand, uniforms seven thousand. Um, the flood repair, nothing for next year. Health, health services, which is employee physicals, 2,000. Parts and repairs, 225,000. Utilities, 19,200. Miscellaneous, 1,000. Equipment, 90,000. Bridges and bridge repair, 20,000. What are your plans? Um, well, I think that's going to have to be adjusted too. I don't know. Um, we've got a grade all that's that we need to replace. It's the smaller grade all. Um, it's a 2007 model with the the bigger 4100. And um, then we've got two three quarter ton pickups and then a one ton to replace this year. And then um, I'd like to see us get a larger skid steer with the stump grinder on the front for when we're cutting the roads back, we can get rid of the stumps as we go. So it doesn't leave them, you know, for us to tear up a mower deck or something with. Are you talking about the $90,000? Mm -hmm. well, what you rattle off much more than $90,000, I assume. Right, but I think that was um, for leasing the equipment. So you didn't have to have all the money up front. Is that the plan? I mean, are we going to be able to get all that, or you need it, or? I, I'm not certain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did get a quote on uh, possible financing of the grade all, and it would take the majority of that chunk. Like a four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, something? it's right at four hundred thousand for the grade all. And I think the payment plan was like <clears throat> you had to have eighty thousand a year or something for you.
are really bad. I mean, they're almost not drivable at this point. So, and the one ton, we've had a lot of trouble. It's, it's the only two wheel drive that we've gotten. We've had a lot of trouble out of it. It's in and out of the shop all the time. It's the one we <coughs> use to pull the patching machine. Well, if, if the grade all is $80,000 a year lease, this number's not even ballparkish. Yeah. So oh, why do we have that number in there, I wonder? I don't know, I think <laughs> we might have messed up on that one. That's what we're here for. Which, which number, the 90,000? The 90. What, do we, did we lease a ton truck? We did. Okay, that's the one that's 700 yeah, one. or something a month, like 720 or something. Right. Just, we had one ton, two, three quarter tons, uh, the skid steer, the grinder, and the, the great all. I think that was the total. Three quarters are used for snow removal. Yes. For all the rest of them set up. Yeah. That's probably been salt over the years. Or yeah, they, they're rusted really bad. <coughs> we need to be sure we've got a capability of getting snow off. I know we didn't have any this year, but that doesn't mean we won't ever. We certainly right. need Right. That's one reason I want to replace that one ton, the two wheel <coughs> drive with the four wheel drive, because it was one of the ones that stayed stuck all the time on their snow route, so. I think what we did, Wendy, was the 90,000. I think that's the stump grinder and the skid steer. That was before we added the great all? Yes, and that's then the great all to. is in this contingency equipment reserve down just a little bit. We've got 100 there that after we got quotes on it, the court would consider whether we would do that or not. Maybe. Well, I think we were also discussing this as far as the lease. We didn't know if there was a lease option mm -hmm. um, or else trying to budget for um, a large payment on it. We're going to have to raise that 90 by a large amount, aren't we, to cover their trucks and our great all? And no, it's if you look down at the contingency line item, there's... There's a hundred thousand in contingency. That was that was if think, we found out we could lease the great all. I think we had 184 in, in my notes here. We had 184 thousand total. So that was our our figures. So that 90 is accurate then with yeah, 100 in there. I understand that yeah, now, but it, this doesn't appear to be when you put all that equipment in there. But yeah. that, that's the contingency equipment reserve. Is, <coughs> yeah, that's that's more ballpark, I would think. You see it? What oh, page is a contingency? 15. The next page. Is it? F 15, it's, right it's at in the top. Right below reserve. <coughs> it's 9200. You're on. 15. Oh. Okay. Okay. Dollars late at night. No. <clears throat> okay. I couldn't. I couldn't find it. One thirty. We've got safety equipment down for fifty five hundred. Reserves are at four hundred eighty five thousand, and the contingency reserve is a hundred thousand. Um, all your fringe totals $535,500 for a total road fund budget of $4,054,259. Okay. <clears throat> to look back over receipts just a little bit. Well, wait a minute. That, br that brings. Where are you? Where are, where's your, okay. <laughs> oh, the, I the 90, I'm just trying to get the 90,000. You said you thought the 90,000 was the skid steer, was, was buying and the, it, leasing it. And the pickups, it. that's leasing it. Skid steer with a stump grinder and two pickups and the ton? And the one ton, yes. Okay. And then the 100,000 will take care of 
the great all. The receipts, I just wanted to flip back and let you all be aware that it, um, for that budget, we're moving $1,723,953 from occupational tax fund into road fund. You need to research your stump grinder as much as you can because I know there's a lot of difference. It's a big difference. They them, are. Yeah. That's probably the, as hard on this, anything as you can be. It's one of those rigs. Yeah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I wanted to also remind you all, I think we, we discussed this in salaries, but this does have a, a, a pay bump for superintendent and the current supervisor to bump up just a little bit. Where are you too. now? On the salaries, pages 66 and 67. Six, Wendy's. Six and 67. Wendy was currently at 60,000 a year. It bumps her to 65,000. And then the 2.1. Um, 66 and 67. Roy was at 50,000 and it bumps him to 52, 132, 76, which was, is Jeff Jaco's current salary, and then the 2.1. Would you say that again? I just found it. Wendy's salary, she is currently at 60,000. It says current salary. Currently, and I said what? Right now, she's at $60,000 a okay. year. At, in July 1, that would put her at six, we would bump her to 65,000 for an annual, the evaluation period. Probationary. Yes, period. thank you. So th this on this, on this uh, salary sheet and so forth, it says current salary and salary with raise. So that those, those so it's the, the it, current salary is 60,000 mm -hmm. instead yes. of 65. July one, it would bump to 65. Okay. So that's why I've got it under current, so that okay. it would add the 2.1 in there. In the same way with Roy. That's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. That was the original intent. And, and well deserved, <coughs> like I say, they got less employees and they're doing twice as much. They're doing a very good job. Would you say Roy's went to? From what to what? I'm sorry, what? yeah, he's going to what? What, um, what? what is he now? 50. 50 to what? 52, he's going to, July 1 he would go to what? Jeff Jaco was making, which is 52,132, and then that's why it's in current, so that you would add the 2.1% to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I told her that she 
random. Yes. <coughs> you all have any other questions about the road fund? <coughs> is this this a new sheet here that we is mm -hmm. it is it differ from the other one we've had in the package mm -hmm. one and two? What's the difference in there? That yellow? No, the dates after the last meeting, they're the changes are dated. So anything after the tenth? Okay, just the bottom, the the mm -hmm. top are the same. So mm -hmm. those are changes. They, none of these uh, pertain to the road department. No. Okay. It's it's very diff I'm trying my best to keep the log of the changes, but it's very difficult because when you change one thing, it, it will make at least two other things have to change to balance. So it gets to be quite hard to remember <coughs> which ones changed which way. Are we going to go over those changes from the 10th to the, you want to do that now or? We, we can, them, or we can go over them when... Oh, wait, that doesn't matter. I just know if we were, if we were going over them, I didn't know if anything pertained to road. I... No, there's nothing that pertains to road. The only thing is the discussion of road department buildings, and we've done that, so... You had mentioned bridge repair at one time, Wendy. Was that because you'll notice there's there's not amount in there for what we owe still on the Sharkow Bridge. That's going to be taken into consideration with the reserves. Is that four hundred eighty-five thousand. I got an email yeah. from FEMA like three weeks ago saying that we should know something by the end of that week, but we still haven't. <laughs> about FEMA, on the that's obligation. what I was going to ask. I didn't know I knew they. But... Yeah, all we know is it's been <laughs> moved to <laughs> hazardous <laughs> mitigation, but as far as obligating the money, they haven't really come up with a figure yet. Still, they haven't forgotten about us anyway. No. Evidently. Yeah, I think if it wasn't for Jessica Mitchell, we probably would have been forgotten. She's been on them every week sending emails. Any other questions on the road uh, department, Wendy? Appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Is we don't have a sheet like that, do we? Mm -hmm. That that has where it says Emily uh, adds sell dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's just your notes to yourself or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you understand? You all have met and understand this, but we're having to just like the ninety thousand dollars. You know, that ninety thousand dollars is not sufficient for the equipment. Wendy rattled off until mm -hmm. we saw the hundred thousand dollars on the next page. That, mm -hmm. uh, that might be helpful if we if we knew. I mean, that. it doesn't it doesn't say that. anything more that we didn't discuss today. Do what? It doesn't say anything more that we didn't discuss today. Oh, uh, okay. I, I I know that, but when we were looking for the ninety thousand dollars in the uh, equipment, that wasn't even ballpark, and it took you know, 10 minutes to, to find that, you know, $100,000 over there. If we'd have known that, we wouldn't even have the question. I, 
until we got over there. That's what I was we were trying to justify the. But this the, doesn't say that. The Ninety thousand. Oh, I, I know that, but just in that, you know, we we didn't know, and and Wendy just said that ninety thousand dollars wasn't right, so we can see it as as we look over the budget. I, I, I know that, but when, when Wendy was saying we'll have to adjust that number, that's not right. And, you know, after 10 minutes of discussion, we turned over to the next page and the contingency equipment reserve it was the explanation, which is obviously. Actually, it's, it's right here in my notes. When we sat down with each department head, I don't expect Wendy to remember uh, oh, I know. I don't back mean. in March the notes. That's why she said that. Right. I, but. It, right, but we the, didn't know the that. The 90,000, the equipment. You all knew that because you all met with them, but we didn't know that's what I'm saying. Well, that's, you know, you know, you know now, right? Right, but that, when I had asked a question, nobody could answer that question. Well, but the notes aren't going to tell you anything more. Okay. okay. I don't understand. I mean, that's, that's why we're here today, so that you can see exactly Correct. what the... The line items are. Yeah. Okay. Misty, you're you ready? You don't want me to just go through the appropriations like I did with the road department? Emily, is there any changes besides the roundup on, on this? From no. budget one to budget three, nothing but roundup? Right. Okay. Your salaries for 911, that backup is page 77. Includes Misty's salary as a director, and then she does have eight full time dispatchers now. She's got a full staff. She had what now? She has a full staff now. She's got eight full time dispatchers. Okay, so that's that's the difference in 116,000 more than last year. Um, probably so. I'd have to pull up last year's numbers. But um, some of the dispatchers make more than the prior dispatchers. Um, they would be, we had a few that we sent to the academy and then they left, so we brought in laterals and they, they make more per hour, but we didn't have to send them off to the academy. This also is a more accurate reading of their overtime part-time and then the pay scale variance there that pay scale variance is kind of is to absorb some of the shift cover type overtime um, and also if we have a lower paid <coughs> employee leave and we bring them in with another lateral that might be a have more experience or something that will allow for that as well Mm -hmm. The last two years, we had to shift money from other line items over to help cover those payroll issues. And I think this year when we sat down, we were trying to just be more accurate right up front, mm -hmm. um, as well as I think we included um, a little bit for a quality assessment position, which we had talked about. Mm -hmm. um, that is just an anti-liability type position that allows us to, it's not really a supervisory position, but it is some responsible for ensuring compliance of which we discussed before, but it really wasn't uh, in the budget to do that. So I think a little bit of that, maybe a small 
amount, maybe less than 5,000, I think, mm -hmm. was um, for that compliance position. And, and that's reflected where in here? It's in the salary increase. Okay, is this like the others, this is, we don't have the old salary, they said current salary, this is the current proposed salary, like the road department? The only thing that wouldn't be their current salary would be the pay scale variance and overtime and part-time that aren't assigned to any one individual. That that position that she's talking about hasn't has yet to have been assigned oh, so to an here. individual. Oh, okay. It's okay. it's proposed to be assigned. Okay. Um, this also allows for nine one one to 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 change how, how they're. Direction has changed where they will fall under the county admin code. Under our code, holidays do um, are a part of overtime. They are considered hours works for the pur purpose of overtime. So 911 was not like that. So we needed to allow for that change. So we've budgeted for that change in the upcoming fiscal year. Ours was straight time. I think now it's time and a half. So mm -hmm. all of our holidays. <coughs> Give you a little update. I did run our numbers. We are up 7,000 calls year to date uh, from where we were last year. We knew we we just continued to um, increase with call volume, but that gives you a kind of a snapshot of where we are um, last year, and that's for all agencies across the board. 7,000 calls up. If you don't have any more salary questions, I'll go on through. <coughs> Advertising is 500. Office supplies, 4,000. Uniforms, 900. Dues and subscriptions, 200. Phone services, 60,000. Travel and training, 5,000. What was that increase? Uh, we pulled some from another line item, looks like. But. Yeah. Um, for several years, there's been a state, the state wanted us to separate CMRS funds, not the wireless funds from the landline funds and how we spend them. But we put so much into 911 at this point that it, it exceeds anything that they've given us. So we felt like we could combine those and just eliminate that separation. But travel and training, 5,000. Miscellaneous, 500. Communication equipment, 42,500, and office equipment, 5,000. Uh, reserves are 52,900, and fringe is $190,700 for a total of $735,200. Misty, are we finding the uh, the cell phone revenue is I got something I read something from Keiko, but uh, Brian Roy sent me that uh, uh, the way they're figuring it now is more accurate and it's it significantly more than than uh, we thought it was going to be. There were, it was minimally more than what we thought it was going to be. Of course, when they shot us that original uh, budget, they said that they were hoping it was on the low side, and I think we actually brought in. 40, was it 40 mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. above what we had in years past? Mm -hmm. So typically we get about 150 a thousand, uh, yeah. 150 thousand a year in wireless. This year it was around 190, and I think it's going to increase next year. Yeah. As well and cap out in 2018. Well, this was just the January figures of this year that that uh, was looked like it was you know up uh, 3.5 million to, to 4 million, and and they said that based on you know, played out over the, the 12 month period, it was gonna be almost double that 3.5 to 4 million. Ours hasn't been double, our payments haven't been double over, okay. the, orig over the original estimate, but they have been maybe seven or $8,000 higher the first two, and then I think the third payment was maybe $12,000 higher than what they estimated. Yeah, well that's, that's yeah. probably on Which, target statewide. Exactly, exactly, so um, it's Which was good news. I originally thought. I mean, it has helped. I think it's going to cap out at 60000 in 2018 mm -hmm. over the, like the 150 that we were receiving. Yes. 
Um, on the receipt side, we went from, we had 148,000 in this year and we're projecting 212,000 ne in next year's budget. Um, it still leaves the county subsidy at 322,450. So about 60,000 extra next mm -hmm. year. That's how yes. Built in additional revenue. I think the key to take out of this is the subsidies going up. It's going to continue to go up. then budget I mean you know we just we do the best we can we've um, last week we had to staff three dispatchers we were so busy and that's the first time since I've been there that we've had to staff three dispatchers so um, I think it's going to become the norm probably through the summer months as the tourism's up in the county and things like that um, so it's a good thing on one end and it's kind of bad for us uh, not to keep in good communication with you all and doing all this but I've never had Three. Population doubles. It does. It does. But we're usually able to handle it. I mean, it was so busy last week that two people were in. Fortunately, we have a great state. Any more questions? Appreciate your time. Okay. Um, what I've been doing is just going down the, the list of the amounts and, and the categories, and if they have any questions for you, they'll just pop in there. Um, personnel, 100, or I'm sorry, 78,600. That is reflect, reflected on page 58 of your payroll schedule. It allows 12,000 for weekend holiday and relief staff and 2,200, well, I'm sorry, $2,314 for overtime. How much for over, how many overtime hours? What just did it get? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
51 hours. 51 hours of overtime? Mm -hmm. Ballpark is all in 51 <coughs> hours. I'm not really sure how many hours of overtime we did last time, but since um, we've been talking about the health department taking over the bites and us not going out on all the calls we had been going on. What, do you, what would you anticipate you made in this year or will make in this year overtime hours? This past year? Mm -hmm. It was pretty high. It was more than that, I'm Both pretty points. sure. Double that? Yeah. Triple that? I would say with the first year, because we weren't exactly sure right. on everything, and you know that's the reason why we were over budget. Right. Because some things got confused on how we were supposed to handle things. Right. I think with the overtime, uh, there was a change in 2015, uh, around the end of 2015, as far as the health department uh, and how the health department is supposed to, by statute, uh, investigate certain uh, cases. We're going to be discussing that at some point because there was a change made and I don't think the fiscal court was made aware of that and how the operations were affected. And when you look at 911, uh, they were governed by a board. Uh, changes were made and the health department no longer did the investigations. Uh, and I think we need to get back to where they do the way that they're supposed to be done. done they're, right. they're supposed to do them? The yes, by statute they're supposed to be doing it. Okay. We're supposed to do them with the health part. Health part. Okay, yeah, good. That's good. But that doesn't change if, if when they're in charge, they're, they don't take position. If someone, if <coughs> the understanding is if a dog bites and, and they, uh, there's the waiting period, if that dog is housed where the, the it can't get out, then there's no need for involvement with the animal, uh, with the uh, animal control. Right. The way they used to do it, they would come out and do the investigation. Right. They do. If, if they didn't need the animal control to come out, then. Right. And then it got to where we they would responded do like a first. Right. And, yeah. and then call if there was a need. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And it's it's just an example where somebody else makes a decision that has a dollar attached to it. The implications uh, had dollars attached to it, but uh, we're going to have to discuss that in detail. Next view, our fringe on salaries. For a total of $42,900 in fringe. Euthanasia, $500. Shelter, food, and supplies, $2,500. Office supplies, I'm sorry, building maintenance and supplies, $7,500. That is bumped up just because their building is aging. And um, we've asked the maintenance crew to start tagging their bills as to which building it's for so we can distribute that better. Yes, these, well, you're going to get to it, but these repairs below, has that been rolled into the? Yes. Maintenance and supplies, mm -hmm. rolled it all together. Mm -hmm. okay. Office supplies, 1,500. Uniforms, 600. Medical supplies, 7,000. Travel, 4,000. Equipment, 5,000. And construction, 3,500. Anticipate any construction? Or I mean, there's construction that we've wanted for a long time, but don't get it. So there's no point. One of the things that we're also looking at is the Humane Society. Um, 
we've identified that there may be a possibility to partner with them and uh, take our adoptables and move them over uh, to the Humane Society um, to where they're dealing less with the public as far as adoptables um, and kind of separating out those two uh, duties, if you will. So that I know the construction was discussed, but uh, it might be something where the Humane Society with their facility may be able to facilitate uh, the adoptables. Is that going to reduce? Our adoptables are not a problem. So is that going to reduce your adoption fees? It's going to, it's going to reduce our adoptions. I mean, right now we have a high rate of adoptions. Okay. If we send them over there, they're going to sit. I mean, the Humane Society only adopts out about 100 animals a year, and we adopt out about 700. So there's a big difference in their adoption abilities and ours. I'm not sure it'll matter a lot. When they get full, they quit taking them anyway, so I don't know how much it'll affect Well, they only you, fit they 18. Only want the very best of the best, or they won't, they won't take anything else. No, and then if we send over our adoptables over there and they don't get them adopted out, then our euthanasia rate's gonna skyrocket. And they go through a new director about once a year. I think it, I think it uh, needs further discussion. It's not so much the adoptables as far as the, the public's uh, interaction with the animal shelter where you got a lot of uh, euthanasia going on and then you're trying to adopt out of the same facility. Um, so there's, there's, there's definitely some things that we need to at least discuss um, that both have a... Uh, an impact financially and, and uh, an impact with the way people feel how business is being conducted. So. We just need to be careful. I, we've, like I said, we've. This has been. This has happened. I guess when we we've, we've tried to partner with them in the past, and and sometimes it works. It works a while, and and uh, then they get full, and it, we just want to. I don't want to get in a position where we're sending everyone to them, and then we'll have adoptables, and they forget about the animal shelter being a place they can adopt. Also, I just. Well, they want to do that. they. Can only take so many animals over there and the adoption fee is higher. A lot of the public don't want to pay that fee. They can get a dog from us for 25 bucks that's already fixed and vaccinated. Yep, yeah, we've been through this before. Right. Plus they sit on them and if the animals, with us, the animal usually doesn't stay longer than six months and our euthanasia rate is under 10%, which most people consider no kill. Yes. So if they go over there and sit for a year, then that's a spot that another dog can't take that place and they will hold that dog and not give it back. Yeah. <coughs> There's lots to consider. Of course, I'm a little worried about it because if my rates go up in euthanizing, then I'm gonna be the blame for that move. I think at this, at this point, the reason why we're looking at it as well is that you know the, the financial piece of it, uh, the management of uh, personnel, uh, and the amount that the, the budget has gone up uh, or over the budget. Uh, the, so there's, there's, there's a lot of pieces that we have to look at. The personnel, when we first went into animal control, I mean, I, I know the county was saved a lot of money removing how it was and putting it where it is now. But we, you know, we're told we could use a part-time more often, which is what I did, I didn't realize it wasn't budgeted in, and I guess I should have brought that to everybody's attention right away instead of just thinking that. The only people in that room is all where it would go, so it wasn't that I was using the part-time more than I was supposed to, I was told that I could, and that's where it went wrong. I'm gonna disagree with you, Autumn. I think the, as the director, you're responsible for that budget, um, and, and we're over I, that I budget never, quite a bit. Let me, let me finish because I, I don't make the budget decision solely. It's the fiscal court that does that. Uh, the dollars that were budgeted uh, were budgeted for this fiscal year. 
So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we're going to have to look at in detail. Uh, right or wrong, I mean, we do have to look at it uh, in, in so that we understand what the, the numbers are and what yeah. the details are. I mean, I understand that too, but I don't understand why we would pay the Humane Society, I don't know how much money, 25000 a year when we can just put the money into the shelter. Because, I mean, once you start doing that, it's going to be ongoing. When the money can just go into the shelter and it's done. I don't, I don't know where you're getting those numbers at, but... I just threw that out there. I don't know how much you're planning on paying them. Yeah. Well, again, it's the, the physical court is going to have to look at the details of this. And I know there's been a history. You can go back and look at the history. I know y'all dealt with this in the past, but I think uh, times have changed. Um, there, there may be other um, opportunities to, to manage the, the facility in a different way to where uh, it'll benefit uh, everybody. The biggest thing is when there's budgeted dollars, those budgeted dollars have to be managed. I mean, that's as simple as it gets. Yeah, um, I mean, I would have also assumed that when I was a thousand dollars over, I would have been told to not thirteen thousand. Maybe I could have we're, gotten we're gonna, We're going to move time forward. The, the fiscal court's going to have to uh, discuss it in detail. Well, we we had uh, obviously there's been some changes out there. That obviously, you and Jonathan do it now instead of the the two fellows we had <coughs> before. So obviously, it's different. It's very similar to the, I would think it's, you're, you know, you're going through a new system and, and uh, a change. And just like when uh, alcohol became a factor in Marshall County, we estimated the, the, the alcohol revenue to, and underestimated it or overestimated it by $330,000. So obviously this could happen. You know, it's not a you know, $13,000 there is, is uh, so you know it's you know when we're that, all on a learning curve. You know when that change occurred. Right now. Do you know when that change occurred? What change occurred? The one you just mentioned. Uh, a couple three years ago. The what change are you referring to? The animal shelter guys. The two get two guys, the Mr. Green and Mr. Lovett. Since two or three I've years ago. Here, since I've been here, I think. Yeah, it's been since I've it, been It was March, March of last year. Yeah, since I've been here, yeah. Now, March of last year. The actual changes regarding the 13,000 was this fiscal year in September. When me and Jonathan, when me and Jonathan so we, took from, it over. Yeah. That, that's the good thing about uh, with the time clock plus, you can actually pull up, it's very accurate. Uh, those changes occurred in September. But we can we can discuss that in in, in detail. But uh, we have <coughs> been doing everything we're supposed to be doing. We've been we don't have the part time right now, so we've been taking up the extra hours and working the holidays and weekends. Is there any other questions regarding next fiscal year with the budget of dollars? All right. Appreciate your time. You want to go ahead and do mine? We can if you want. I just sent for Brenda. Come on. <laughs> His salaries are in the salary schedule pages 9 through 12. Did you just tell us where it was in the sheet? Nine through twelve. Okay. Most of county attorneys is is salaries. Um, county attorney salary forty thousand one hundred. Assistant salary nineteen thousand. Secretary salary one hundred fifty seven thousand. FICA nineteen thousand two hundred dollars. Retirement forty eight thousand two hundred dollars. Health insurance ninety thousand two hundred dollars. Life insurance fourteen hundred, and the HRA eighty five hundred. Um, that's all payroll. 
Office supplies, 13,000, and uniforms, 1,200. The, the uniforms, I would, what I agreed to do was uh, pick a certain set of uh, shirts with, for them to wear. For them, and then, well, they, I picked the, the shirts, they, they're going to pick the colors. We're going to put the logo on them and so they can wear them. That law, we had, that's the only uniforms, that, that's only part of the uniform that we would use. Jeff, where did the, uh, there's obviously some big number differences there uh, in the uh, retirement and the health and so forth. What attributes those? Not the change in the. Okay, what we've done. Eleven thousand nine hundred dollar savings, a twenty six thousand dollar, or thirty four thousand. When we were when we were here last year, there was some concern that I have a I, I had a state contract for child support, and the county was contributing towards some of their pay. Uh, in the way of fringes, and we have uh, worked through that and all but eliminated that this year. Yeah. That's what we were able to reduce because the, the benefits portion of our budget covers this, not only the salaries, or it did, not only the salaries that are covered in the budget, but the child support salaries are covered by state contracts, so they're reimbursed, but we had never reimbursed on benefits okay. but we we're down a person in child support now so we can use some of those contract funds to actually reimburse part of the most of benefits yep. that's why we were able to reduce our benefits budget so much and, and, and mostly by the within this next year that will be there will be no county contribution to the fringes but that's, it'll, it'll be reimbursed 100 percent that, that's the oh. fringes what what about the what what does this do and i know it's down and which is headed that's a good thing uh what is the with with this proposed budget what is the subsidy uh, that the county subsidizes the county child attorney's, support county attorney's no. office the total county the, the total the total of of their budget and the general fund is three hundred ninety seven thousand eight hundred dollars in fiscal year 18, budgeted fiscal year 17 was $460,100. Say that again, kind of loud. This year, four sixty one hundred. dollars Proposed for 18 is $397,800. It's a $62,300 savings. Uh, we discussed that earlier in the first budget work, so that's that's good. <coughs> and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but <coughs> when you say 100% of the fringe, you mean those associated with the child support contract? Yeah, right. child, just the child support contract, right? Not those that are county employed, right? Or the, or those <coughs> the the the, the mo most of the rest, there you pay a portion of their their salary. Because they all. Huh? He's talking about. <coughs> that are dual. I, some of those you pay a portion of their salary, and the state pays a portion. But you will still pay your portion of their, uh, <coughs> of their fringes. Yeah, some of the secretaries that are in this budget also draw a salary from the state. So these these salaries listed here are only what we pay them? Yes. Or? Yes. They're, but their total state salary. salary is not listed in this. No, that money So this is in addition, this is in addition to their uh, state salary. And which, which employees are they? Well, Shauna Watkins. Wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. We're not talking about child support here. There are a couple, well, one of the assistants, one of the assistants, you don't pay any of Jason's salary, but um, the county attorney's assistant salary there, that's Lisa. Okay. And she draws a state salary also. 
Okay. And a couple of the secretaries draw partial salary from the state and partial salary from the county. And which one of those? You said Lee. Watkins and Cheryl Healy. Okay. I just didn't know that. That's okay. Well, that's why you'll see their salaries are much lower individually than any other secretaries. And they've been there the longest. Yeah. There's three of them or two, Lisa two. and Cheryl? Well, Lisa's, uh, she gets, she gets a, a, a quarter time salary from the state, so she doesn't get any benefits from the state. Lee, and then Cheryl Ely and Shauna Watkins both <coughs> part time with the state. Brenda, on, on the page 11, where your salary, is that a typo or something? Current salary, $55,000 salary with raise 13,000? No, that's from where the last budget workshop, you asked me to change that so that in that first first column, you saw that employee's oh. entire salary. Oh, that's her salary, okay, okay. I pay a portion of her salary out of my budget. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that done with every change that one? Is that changed everywhere, not just that one? It is Brenda, myself, Karen, Brad, um, Scott, Scott Brown. Yeah, that's pretty much it, okay. Good. Yeah. Are there any other questions for county attorney's budget? All right. Appreciate you. Well, one other thing. We, <laughs> I guess there have been some issues regarding AOC in the past, and the judge and I, uh, we talked at length, and then I have agreed to uh, take, take that over and handle the county's relations with AOC as far as you know what what we need to do and when there's a manual on it we have that and I have turned that over to Kanita Roy and I've given her a slight raise because she has those extra duties this coming year the biggest biggest thing with that is that uh, we would not capture those dollars unless we follow that yes. procedure so and I can assure you she's there. she's been through the manual and that. she's even lecturing me on it <laughs> You'll notice that uh, that increase, um, since it, I didn't put a name to it, but since it wasn't yet approved, I didn't want to attach it to someone and then it not happen. But um, it's on page 54, which is the judicial center salaries, because they would, judicial AOC should reimburse on the oversight of their. Where are you now? Page 54 in salaries. 54, 54. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we got the caption part of text crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where Kanita is. Kanita is that employee? Yeah.
questions. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it, Brenda. Thank you. Brenda. <laughs> 52 is on um, payroll for Hagen Brock's crew. Okay, you're next. Or the, a portion. <coughs> what page? 52 is salaries and. Fifty-two. That then on your appropriations. And where are the other appropriations? Seven. It could possibly, it will probably be a little bit of page six also, since he's over all of our buildings. Page six has the, <coughs> the courthouse on there as well. Y'all like, I'll go ahead and go down through the items. Custodial maintenance salaries, 56,100. That is custodial in this building only. Um, and their vacation sick time relief staff. Um, FICA, 4,300. Retirement, 10,800. Health insurance, 20,800. Life, 300. And HRA, 800 for the custodial employees. Um, 1,000 for courthouse pest control. 4,000 other contract services. Courthouse maintenance and repairs, nothing. We've combined that line item down into uh, 571, down below that. Cleaning supplies, 6,000. Um, maintenance and janitorial uniforms. This doesn't, that line does include um, text crew as well as our janitors here. Janitors here at $100 a piece, but text crew is at $300 a piece, equivalent to, to the other departments. Repairs and maintenance to the courthouse is 30,000. Utilities, courthouse 50,000, miscellaneous 1,000, and remodeling courthouse 25,000. Um, the 25,000 I know was mainly to move, continue to move us into removing the carpet from the building and replacing it with tile. Um, 5085, which is other county buildings. The sheriff's office custodian, that's where um, her pay, the portion of her pay posts. Um, this maintenance of salaries, this is Tech and Brock and his crew, 242,000. FICA, 19,100. Retirement, 47,600. Health insurance, 68,700. Life insurance, 700. HRA, 3,000. Other buildings, pest control, 3,500. Other buildings, maintenance supplies, 70,000. This has a, a high increase because we removed the maintenance, the building maintenance from the jail's budget and moved it into other buildings for the courthouse. Utilities are the same way. There's a high increase because we removed those from the jail and put them into the general fund. So it's 22,700. Equipment and tools, $2,500. The maintenance retirement. Mm -hmm. 47600 That's on... Um, it doesn't match mine. It doesn't? 48 more. 
우리 I will look at that following our meeting and report to you all on what I need to do with it. It probably has something to do with what um, Commissioner Cock had asked for regarding splitting their salaries and adding to it. It's probably related to something with that. So. I'm going to go ahead and go through judicial also, if that's okay, just because you're going to get the majority of it too. <clears throat> judicial cust custodial and maintenance salaries. This is um, this is the two janitors down there. Um, oversight from the chief bailiff and a portion of Teckenbrock's crews and then the portion of Canadas with the AOC liaison duties. Um, FICA is 5,800. Judicial retirement is 14,300. Judicial health insurance, 17,600. And yeah, there's another discrepancy. Yeah, there's it's got, that's got to do with what it is, I bet. Okay. Yes. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just... No, and if you all don't mind, I'm going to try to fix this and see what... Because it's going to throw my balance off, so I'm going to have to change two or three other things. So we might as well work towards it. What did yours have? 13.7. Okay, that's where I'm at now. That rounding will get you every time. Mm-hmm. still balanced, so I'm not exactly sure why. <laughs> it's awfully coincidental that they balanced out. <laughs> um, okay. HRA, 500. Carpet cleaning, 1,000. That's something that Ricky Inman is usually in charge of making sure is done. Building maintenance and grounds, $32,500. Pest control, $1,200. Maintenance and supplies, $3,500. Custodial supplies, $6,000. Jury expenses, $500. Um, gas for the generator, $500. Judicial uniforms, $100 each, $200. There's two janitors. Um, judicial center insurance, this is our earthquake and our cash policy, is 62202 Judicial medical supplies, 200. Remodel projects is zero. If there are some that are identified throughout the year, we'll amend those in. Travel expenses, 500. Utilities, 90,000. And maintenance equipment, 1,000. One of, 
one of my problems with my budget is about 33% of my labor costs are going to the jail. <coughs> and about 100% of the overtime goes to the jail. And it's leaving me short to get things done everywhere else. I mean, it's a, it sucks up a lot of, a lot of resources on my part. And that's something to consider because we haven't budgeted any overtime for them because prior to taking on the jail, you all didn't have overtime. Very, very seldom. I had, had to send people in on two different occasions this weekend. And I got about six phone calls this weekend. We've got, <coughs> we've got a major remodel that they're wanting to do in a GIS. Uh, we've got to refinish the sidewalks. Uh, Wendy's wanting a pole barn built, possibly. Uh, she's wanting new flooring. Court clerk's office clerks. new flooring. Uh, 911 is wanting to uh, do removed. some renovations. We still got to do finance office floor. I mean, we've got a lot of what I would call major projects on our plate, and that's not counting the day-to-day, -day, you know, clog line or whatever that we... That, that pops up. It, yeah, it, it's constant. I mean... What did you say the percentages were for the jail time? Well, I know I'm, sending, I'm sending two of my guys to the jail every day, and I've got Counting myself, I've got six guys, so basically 33% of my labor costs okay. are, are being absorbed down there. And I'd say 100% of the overtime, because we hardly ever, right. I mean, the jail is a 24-7 operation, whereas the courthouse, mm -hmm. judicial building, everything else is... Like something goes home. Right. Yeah. And we've, Tech and I, we've talked, one of the things um, when we've had uh, energy companies come in and look at the county as a whole, uh, the jail is always the number one. It's the number one facility um, at the top as far as where we could save with energy efficient um, upgrades. But uh, as far as the, uh, the maintenance, the personnel, um, you know, we've, we've discussed could we sit down with Roger and the salary that he has in his budget put in the Roger's budget where he has a maintenance person solely dedicated to him that he can manage uh, for those calls on the weekends and stuff like that? Uh, because if he's sending two people, um, obviously it's eating up his, his labor uh, for jobs that he has. We've, yeah, we've always had, I mean, we've always felt like those projects that they do, is they're very cost effective when you look at it from a, if you're <coughs> bidding them to other companies and outside, is they, they do these projects very efficiently from a cost standpoint. So yeah, well, that's something we need to see if we can resolve. If I don't the, know, um, have to talk to their jailer. I don't know. Yeah. How, how they were they busy when, before they took. Before yes. There was a full-time maintenance person at the judicial building and a full-time maintenance per person at the jail. Yes. Roy was <laughs> not the only one. He was in jail, wasn't he? Prior to started off at the judicial center. Yeah. 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 Well, we had Fred at yeah. the jail. Yeah, the jail used to, several years ago, the jail had one yes. that they paid, and the judicial center had Roy. Then when Fred left the jail, he was Roy was split 50-50. One of my problems is with, with sending two guys to the jail, that leaves me with, with three employees that I can do these other, other projects with. And my goal throughout this was to have four employees and two trucks. That way, if we're working on a project and we get a call from Harden and we've got a problem that's, you know, a 30 minute job, it's still gotta be done. You know, a clog line or, or whatever. The way it is now, with three guys in one vehicle, I have to pull them off. They got to pick up their tools, go do that job, then come back. And if I had four people in two vehicles, it would 
give me some lead weight. Well, I'm going to send you over here and you, you two over here. And I think the jobs will get done a lot faster and make people a lot happier. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a big part of it. Saying you need another employee. I, I need. I need. Well, I, I, yeah. There, there, there's options. Uh, obviously, that's one. Uh, the other one is, you know, he's he's budgeted in uh, a truck, but if we can solve the problem with uh, the, the jail. Uh, sending somebody down there or having somebody dedicated to the jail uh, since it is one of the, the largest uh, uh, call volumes, I guess you can say, uh, then that would free up uh, your guys having to send somebody or two people down there all the time. Uh, the way it's set up now, you need a truck so that you can split your crew up, but then your efficiency is affected. So, I mean, there's... There's more, it's, it's not an easy uh, solution, but we do need to at least have that conversation. Now we did put out, uh, uh, we're trying to get uh, uh, RFQ from the energy companies to see what uh, the cost would be to have a company come in and manage, uh, go through the, the jail and upgrade where the efficiency be upgraded to where we have less calls uh, going down to the jail and save money on and save money utilities. On, yeah, uh, I know. I know. McCracken County just did it. Uh, the first couple months, they saved seventy-five thousand by upgrading. But uh, I don't think we expect when the, the one company said it get back to us June. happen is you put that proposal out there they <clears throat> they all come on site at once and evaluate your properties from what they tell me is that you can I know we want to focus on the jail but you can include all county properties and, and facilities and then after you award the uh, energy group uh, the proposal the bid then you sit down and identify steps or even ones that you want to focus on first and you don't have to do all of them at once so, um, so when I when we get that, I can um, let you guys look at it. And I think that's something that we're going to bring up in, at the next court meeting. Or yeah, I mean, because it's it's obviously, I mean, it's something that is, is affecting your your department. Uh, I had a, had a call this weekend. There was three cells in the jail that air went out. Yeah. I know the two companies that Who's spoke to us group? last year. I mean, what? Who's Energy Group? We've talked to two of them. One of them is ESG. They salivate for me. And the other one is Train. <coughs> but there's there's also the Infection Group. Um, I mean, there's there's I think about nine in the state. There's um, several. For me yeah. So we'll uh, so everybody will have the opportunity. Just you know, find it. Yeah. You know. Uh, I don't know if this is an immediate fix or if it's going to take some time going into the next fiscal year uh, to fix it or at least identify what we can do. But I, I do understand what, what Tech was saying as far as uh, sending two people down to the jail each time there's, there's an issue. Uh, we, we definitely got to look at that. Uh, it's, there's a lot of variables that we have to look at. I mean, it also ties up one of my trucks. They gotta have something to get from point A to point B in. That's what I was wondering about. Yeah. Are you saying you have two people down there every day, all day? Well, for the most part, if when they, if and when they get caught up, which is very rarely, they'll. If we've got a project going, they'll they'll come in and lead me in. That is not can't depend on it. Not happening a lot now. Any value in a short term lease of some sort for a vehicle? Get by for a while 
we just give him a, you know, give him some way to get his people around to go do a, a quick job. Yeah, we, we were even looking at uh, Wendy's two vehicles, but they're they're in such bad shape. And we didn't feel like we would be helping tech out any by giving him a <laughs> paying mileage for somebody to use their own vehicle. Guys, I yeah. Mean, uh, I don't know. Just something to short term here if we're going to try to resolve it down the road. <laughs> well, I mean, Roger has vehicles <clears throat> in his fleet, has he not? I mean, if, if the work is being done at the jail, you know, when they need parts or whatever, it would seem to me like they could drive one of his vehicles. Yeah, I, think I don't what, know. What we talked about was it's either you dedicate somebody full time to to report to the jail and, and leave from the jail. So you wouldn't need a vehicle. Right. Or you get another vehicle and and split them up. Whatever. I mean, whatever works for We We just had that yeah, arrangement uh, earlier, didn't we? Where Roy <coughs> came over from there to your crew. Do what now? We had a guy there, Roy Jones was there, and we just changed that structure. Well, he wasn't supervised. Yeah, I understand that. So now he's being supervised and you're still sending two people. Uh, I think that's that's something we need to do is get with Roger, sit down and-, and yeah, I'm sure he'd be, I mean, he'd probably work with us yeah. from a vehicle standpoint or whatever. Is Roger in this still budget process somewhere, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> you should have already seen him. Well, I have seen the budget, but we didn't discuss that in the budget. Discuss what? The, with Roger, you said we need to sit down with Roger. Looks like this would be the time to do that. Yeah, but this budget process. the budget we did discuss. Uh, we're, what we're talking about is options. We've already got dollars budgeted for labor. We either keep it in his budget, or one of the options would be is put it in Roger's budget. Right. And let Roger supervise. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about, but that's what I say. Can we? Do we need to get Roger in here and and further discuss that? That's what we just said. Okay. When are we pro propose to do that? We'll, we'll get when over Roger. Roger. Workshops. No, we'll get over Roger and try to figure out. I mean, this yeah, isn't a, this isn't an easy. This is what we need to do. Uh, there's some long-term things that are going to oh, take I, place. Oh, I understand. I agree. We'll get I agree, it's very complicated. We'll try to figure that out as far as what we need to do. How many vehicles did he have? <coughs> Roger? I know he's got two okay. vans and a crown pig. <coughs> but I don't know of these he's vehicles. Or, I don't know what their capability is. I, or why I, I, I don't either. I would imagine that the, the vans are probably for transport. And that they would be limited as to what you could go haul in those vans for the fear of something being in there that shouldn't be in there. Well, I mean, we're always willing to help other mm -hmm. entities in the county. We, we do that every day. You know, and if, if Roger calls and says, I need this or I need that, that won't be a problem. Yeah. Right. As far as going and getting parts or, mm -hmm. or whatever. He did have a vehicle that he used to run. All right. We'll get with Roger and, and, and get back with y'all. Any other questions for Ted? Page eight. Um, <laughs> 19. Yeah, last page. Page eight. Let's see. I do have a question for you, if you don't mind. Uh, 19.
Security and retirement. Is that just mine or where? That's included. On expenses with the fringe, uh, Social Security, that is you and CAT. Retirement is just you. I'm looking at the, uh, this one right here she gave us, and we have the FICA and retirement. I'm just trying to figure out how we got up to the point. Hey, Casey, will you put that microphone a little closer to you in there? Can, we can't hear across. Just trying to figure out how we got up to 14500 and making sure we, cat uh, stuff's drawn out of his paycheck, similar as mine. Am I, am I correct on that? I'm sorry, what? Uh, cat on his paycheck? Mm hmm He has the withholdings on his paycheck, mm -hmm. same as everybody else's. Uh, then on our on our workbooks that we have on the Excel spreadsheets, I'm wondering what the 941 tax that's been logged in. Um, Social Security and Medicare tax, the employee pays 7.65, but then the employer has to match that 7.65. That's what this this is the match that the county has to pay. Okay. So no matter what, we have to pay that part. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's yeah, what we're no talking about. Is. Day, we're not getting the 20 percent we're getting social uh 12 percent 2010 line lines. 2010 social security that 14,005. county gets 20 percent of the yes, fees collected yes, yes. but it's not 20 percent that we yes. end up having and to work with we have to 12. wind up yeah that's what i was <coughs> unclear on how yes. that stuff is done the employer yes. has to pay out so much mm -hmm. that's what i was wondering how because he's already paying out the part on it Yes. Okay. Answer my questions. What questions do we have? Um, I've gone. I'm probably just going to go through the line items, and then they'll pop. They'll have any questions that they have. They'll jump in. Um, office staff is nineteen thousand seven hundred. Um, it looks like I did not combine Casey's like I did on the other employees doc. Like you'd ask. Um, so Casey has, Casey's salary is split still at a 60% GIS, 40% building inspection. So he has salary on page 55 and 81. It does include an increase. It's a four dollar an hour increase over the spread out over the two positions, two two line items. He was at nineteen ten. This has him at twenty three ten. Only on, on building inspection, it, we're only paying 40% of that salary out of building inspection. Expanded jurisdiction, this is our board, um, $1,500 for board pay. Inspector fees is $200,000. The inspector breakdown is, is on page 82.
Office supplies is 2000 Bonds, inspect, building inspection bonds is 5000 That includes one for Randy Duke at about 3500 and then a $1,500 um, insurance policy for the board since it's a city county joint board. Inspection refunds. Do we not have that, uh, that page right there? That would be page 19. Oh, okay. Travel is ninety two hundred. Um, that includes um, Inspector Dukes. We pay him a mileage rate, and it's included in this line item. There's thirteen thousand four hundred in reserves. Social Security is fourteen thousand five hundred. As as prior said, that's both Larry Spears and Casey Counts's allotments and retirement is 3800 for a total of $270,100. We've we discussed um on the receipt side, there is an apportion that we have asked the cities to budget. I don't believe that they'll be responsible for any of this, but in the event that something doesn't happen like we plan, um, we've split it out portion uh, percentage-wise as to the costs of the permit fees. Um, Benton's is $2,154, Calvert's is $7,010, Hardin's $169, and the county's is $10,666. We also sent that uh, interlocal agreement that Jeff's office had drafted and, and made the changes that we had talked about. Uh, we got that to the cities uh, for their review, so. Any response? But that program, the 8020, continues to cover the expense to this point? Yes, it has at this point. The whole time, all the way through, since its inception. Yes. Okay, that, that was my understanding. I, okay, good deal. With this, with this in pay increase, it, there's a possibility that it might not, but we feel like it will. Casey, do you need anything? Everything's good. Everything's running all right now. It took a little while to get running, but now that we've figured it things out, new. it's going yeah. quicker. <laughs> anything new? Oh, okay. I haven't had too many complaints about the whole process. Or... <laughs> it's, You're going to have complaints, aren't you? Well, we talked to somebody, and they, they said it's been a good, good process. And I go, well, we take criticism, too. It's the only way we're going to learn. Well, I mean, I hadn't. I mean, I haven't heard a lot. I mean, any, any really negative comments about the whole process, and I know just certain people have to deal with it. But you know, this is your building, but yeah. I, haven't, I haven't heard anything really. We, we do have a lot of work going on in the county right now. A lot of work. That's good. That's a good thing. Yes, sir. Good. You right. do a good job. Thank you. Y'all got any questions for me? Casey, appreciate your time. Thank you. Where are we on page nine? <laughs> what page are you on? Nine. Oh.
Not a lot of Lon Adams on ambulance service anymore. <laughs> the, Very few of them. <laughs> yeah, the contract is two hundred three thousand. Um, building maintenance five hundred. Uniforms eight thousand. Recertifications five hundred, and equipment is one hundred and fifteen thousand. Well, that's a that's a reduction. That's okay. You got. Cover you. As far as the line items that she's talking about? As far as the last one. Oh, the equipment. equipment. I mean, what, what we've kind of looked at this year is um, the ambulance that we're replacing is our, it's, it's a type two. It's the one that basically looks like a van. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have the box on it, it's just the van. They're smaller, they're cheaper. Uh, what we're looking at replacing it with, I'm not sure if anybody's seen one, the Ford Transit vans. They kind of yeah. remind you of something you see in Europe. Yeah. Um, a lot, a lot of services are going with those because of their boxy style. They have a lot of interior room on the inside, a lot of headroom. Um, and the thing is, is they're about the, they're about the cost of a van. So you kind of get a little extra space there, plus it, it's a little cheaper. Uh, the initial quote that we got, and like I said, nothing here is finalized. Uh, we got a quote for 81455 to replace our van this year. Um, now, something that doesn't include, that, that doesn't include the, the graphics or anything like that. So there may be a few additional things. This is just kind of a real rough, rough estimate. So you're looking around, you know, eighty to ninety thousand, just rough. Well, that's what I was wondering if you had any anything left. And, uh, yeah, that that, that would something left if you need. If you need that that would that would still be a few things there. Like I said, yeah. you know, the striping that may be, you know, three thousand, thirty five hundred, just depends on who does it. And then, uh, you know, look, I haven't sit down. This was just kind of some temporary price, and I haven't actually sat down with the guy and gone over exactly how we want everything. Uh, but most of the time, the drawings they send us, they send us drawings of services that have already set down, put pen to paper, figured out a good layout, a good design. And uh, he sent me two of the uh, two of the best layouts that they had, and this is what they come back with was 81, 81 455 for the truck. <clears throat> so it leaves you a little wiggle room. Yeah. And then there were there were kind of kind of a couple other things that we were looking at that I was just going to kind of throw out there. One being the uh, it's called a Stryker power load, which Stryker is the company that makes their stretchers. Uh, the, the Stryker power load is something that's new that's come out recently that a lot of people are trying to get, but obviously it's new, so it costs a little bit of money. And, and basically, what it is, is it's a system that mounts in the back of your truck to where now we have the power cots. So when we get somebody on the stretcher, we simply push a button. It, it can lift up to 700 pounds by itself. So we get them to the truck. Well, now they have a system that, that mounts in the back of the truck where you can simply push the stretcher in and it takes care of it from there. It automatically raises the carriage of the stretcher. It automatically, it, it lifts the patient up by itself. I mean, it, it can sit there and hold the stretcher completely out of the truck on its own and, and it's essentially like a file cabinet. Once it lifts them up, you just take and push it in. It locks the patient in just like it does, you know, when we do manually. Um, it's got a charging station built in, so the batteries for the power stretchers, it automatically charges them in there. Once it's docked in, it, it charges the stretcher and everything. I think he's going to play the video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was kind of hoping he could today because I didn't print anything off. I was like, well, they got the big TV. Yeah, so. that, way, that way they can see it. <laughs> if I recall correctly, you've already okay. got the power. Yes, we have the power stretchers. Stretcher, it's just yes. the yes. part that puts it in the truck. The, the, yeah, it's the piece that mounts in the truck that actually lifts it up. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, we've done really good because we've got all of our trucks now outfitted with the, with the power stretchers. Do you remember which one it was, Brian, that you showed uh, Not right off the top of my head. I'm sure there's probably several that... Several you can play that let you see kind of how it how it operates. I have no idea how it works. Brace yourselves.
you need to pause this for a second. Brian, do you want to explain to them that it's the actual housing? Sure. The, the stretcher yeah, you, you guys you, got. You can probably see that black track going down the middle of the back of the ambulance. And then the unit right there. Yeah, right in there. This is the main part of it, and this is the track that basically mounts into the back of the truck. Which now we have a, it's what they call an antler system mounts in the back of the truck it's basically it's a latch on one it, there's there's a pin which you can see it down there on the bottom the very bottom of the stretcher it's a little pin that sticks up the uh the kit this mountain system we have now basically that pin there's a latch that grabs that pin and there's two little antlers in the front that the wheels in the front uh, push into and that's something that they've actually started that they've actually changed new mandates have come out to where if you remount a truck you don't have to comply with the new standards. You can basically keep the same mount system like we have now, but any new trucks either have to go with something like this, or there's a version for the manual stretchers that's, I think it's seven, eight thousand uh, dollars the mount system for it. But luckily for us, I mean, we've, you know, we've, we've been remounting most of our trucks, so we hadn't had, that, hadn't had to have that additional expense of, of the new mount systems. But just kind of looking ahead and looking forward, you know, eventually. What did you say the cost was? Well, the cost for this is uh, for three of them. And please don't fall over in your chairs. For three of them, not including the uh, the installation of them, because you have to have an app, you have to have a third vendor come in and install them, because Striker doesn't install them. Um, for just the power load, the performance upgrade, the uh, and the warranty on it was ninety three nine seventy five for three. And <coughs> the thing the thing is is right now Striker has zero percent. She said we could do a deal where we do three years for. She figured it with the installation and everything. What they didn't do is it was. Uh, Using the, using the three-year 0% interest plan, you guys would have three annual payments of $33,125. <clears throat> and that would outfit three of them. That include insulation cost? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, but it's part of this package? Yeah. Okay. He, he it would go to this. Yeah, and it would continue. Yeah, the installation, they have. It would be at zero interest as well. Installation the way cost, she's written it, yes, that's the way I understand it. And I think if we got serious, I think they could do a little better on the cost. This was just a quote she just sent me, you know, real quick. And I, I've talked to her a little bit, and, and I think they could probably do a little bit better on the cost of the, of the actual equipment itself. The, uh, the company that installs them, they're out of Belton, Kentucky. It's called Instatech. And it's roughly $1,800 for each truck to install it. Because they have to take the they have to take the old one out, which which doesn't take a whole lot, but then they have to go under and act, they actually have to cut places in the floor and mount it to the frame. Because I think there's there's pretty sure there's places on these new systems where it actually mounts to the frame, which is a whole lot more secure and kind of the reason they're moving the direction they are is because instead of the little systems like we have now, they want something that's a little bit better for crash protection, you know, that kind of thing, rollover accidents. Because what they found is a lot of, in a lot of accidents. The one projectile that always ends up coming out of the back of the truck is a stretcher. So they're so they're trying to they're trying to beef things up. And the person on it. And the person on it. Yeah, if there's somebody in there, the person <laughs> on it. So that's one thing they're trying to do is they're trying to beef up some of this stuff to where you know in an accident or something like that, the stretcher isn't something that comes flying out, you know, or, or out of its out of its mountain system. Where'd you say they're out of? Uh, this company is out. Uh, the the company that installs them is out of Belton, Kentucky. Or, what B -L -T -O -N. county is that? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly where that is. Always look, even nationwide, I mean, your injuries are back injuries always. <clears throat> and with ambulance service personnel, that's pretty much the one thing that really impacts oh, sure. y'all sure. often. And, I, and that, that was one thing that can help, <clears throat> can help with, with alleviate that certainly would be worth looking at. Looking at. And that, was, that was one of the big... That was one of the big pushes for like power stretchers and stuff. That's right, not far. exactly. You know, like these. The I mean, power stretchers have been great. They're expensive. Because... Yeah, I mean, I've even had some people, because there were a lot of people at first who were kind of hesitant with the power stretcher because they are heavier than the manual ones. But they said, you know, after a few times, you, you kind of get used to the weight of the stretcher. And then once you, you know, you're wrestling around with somebody and you finally 
get a person, say, if they weigh 400 pounds on the stretcher, then you don't have to bend down to the ground and pick them exactly. up. And then once you get out of the truck, you know, you got to get them out of the house into the truck. And once you get to the truck, then you got to pick them up again for somebody to lift the, lift the carriage up and then slide them in. Yeah, there's a good picture of the, uh, the system itself. That's what it looks like not installed. You can see over there on the right, that's the system like we have now. That picture right there, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Bob, he's talking about safety. Well, one thing that a lot of places are doing, especially overseas, and, and usually like Europe and Australia, they're light years ahead of us in EMS. But one thing they're really moving toward is like individual seats in the back to where somebody has to stay strapped in all the time to attend them. And they're making these things to where like the chairs slide up and down that the back. Was, uh, that, the yeah, that was the, uh, they were <clears> looking <throat> at those for, uh, at the plant for a, uh, for a utility vehicle that you could go into the plant and bring somebody out on a stretcher. Yeah. And it had a seat. Uh -huh. It had a seat you had yep. beside the area where the stretcher sat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know, I don't think we've purchased Talk about mass casualties. I mean, what what do y'all get into? Is, is it always just one one stretcher per ambulance? Uh, yeah, you can only fit one stretcher in each ambulance. What we can do, you know, sometimes like if we get, you know, say a car wreck and there's three to four people injured, if they're not real, if they're not critical, you know, we can take and put some, we have somebody on a spine board, put them on the stretcher, load the stretcher in. Then we crawl inside, move that spine board from the stretcher to the squad bench because there's seat belts on the squad bench too for a patient. And then we can bring the stretcher back out, put another one on, and you can you can haul two in an ambulance. But in anything more than two is but that wouldn't that system wouldn't change that. No, no. Mm -hmm. Do it. Okay. No, this is basically just the lifting component. It's just you know when when you look at the at an EMS call played out. What, they're tr what a lot of places are trying to do now is eliminate all the lifting components of it. So now the only one that they haven't taken out is getting them on the stretcher. <laughs> I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> so, I mean, we get them on the stretcher, stretcher lifts them up. <clears throat> These systems now get them through the truck. It lifts them and, and actually puts them in the truck. And the, uh, the striker up, she's got a van that's outfitted with this thing and, and I've messed with it. And it's, it's literally like a file cabinet. I mean, once it lifts them up, you just one hand, you just push them right in. And then the same thing, bringing them out, like you don't have to lift them coming back out. It slides out, carriage wheels go down, and then it, it releases. And go from there. But one good thing about it too is, is that it, it charges while it's in there. It charges your batteries because now we just have a uh, just like a charging deck you have for like a DeWalt, you know, drill battery. It sits on the it sits on the action area there in the ambulance. It's plugged in, and they have to change their change their batteries and stuff out, you know, as as they go dead. <clears throat> but it's a neat system I, I know there's I think Mayfield has one and I know that Paducah might have one or two so there's really not a whole lot of them you know out there right now because they are they're, they are fairly new and plus you know it's like anything else when something like this comes out it's always just very expensive <laughs> very not, and there's not really another vendor that you know of that no that's making anything different. like this no the only the other big stretcher vendor is Ferno, and what they've made is they've made a, uh, they've kind of <coughs> taken the power lift stretcher and the yeah. power load and put it all into one. So basically their, their stretcher will do what both of those will. Now I've not heard of anybody using them, so I don't know how good they work, um, but I mean it's, a, it's an interesting stretcher. It's very interesting. <laughs> it is. I think it's quite a bit heavier, and the, and the way it works, it's like I said. I mean, it's neat. I mean, the way they designed it, it's got it's got LED lights all down the side of it. So if you're at night, you can click the lights on, and it lights up the whole area around you. And basically, the way it works is kind of like these have a it's, these have what they call an X frame, to where you know it's got the cross members where when it goes up, they do that. The Ferno, once you push the front wheels in. It's got a front set of wheels that lift up. And then once you get a little bit closer, the back wheels start lifting up, but there's already so much of the weight in the front that you don't have to, you, you never have to lift it. Basically, it's like as you keep going in, wheels keep coming up. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of neat, but I don't know if it, there's not a service in this area that uses them, so how, you know, how good they are, I don't know. Plus, it's about the cost of this and that put together. Yeah. 
they're, when they first come out and I kind of price checked them a little bit, they were running 32, 33,000 per stretcher. So it's, it's, it's roughly about the cost of one of these and the stretcher together. <clears throat> Didn't take up any more room than a regular stretcher either. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's the thing with, with this one either. I mean, all that stuff is up under the stretcher, so I mean, it doesn't take up any room walking down e either side of it. <clears throat> Brian, when we sat down, uh, the three to five year planning goes, uh, you know, we discussed this. I think budget wise, I think we got like 28,000. Uh, in my notes here, I think it was 22,000. I think that was for the power load for, just for a single one. Yes. But you're saying that uh, 33,000 for three. For three years, yeah. To outfit three trucks for three years would be 33,125. So, their first, that's their first quote. Anyway. That's their first, yeah. Like I said, this this was just kind of one of those quick deals. Hey, send me a quote on three of them. Yeah. And like I said, I, I've talked to her a little bit, and so I mean, I, I think on the on the initial cost of each unit, they could probably do a little bit better than the. Uh, I think they have, yeah, twenty two <laughs> nine sixty. And it's it's, it's not uh, yeah. too too much. Just on that initial one, it's not. Uh, I think we've got twenty-eight thousand. We had discussed twenty-two, but I think we got twenty-eight. But that's also your couple thousand dollars for your upfit on your ambulance. But yeah, uh, it probably was because you got to figure the eighteen hundred on that, and then like I said, there's a there's a little, there's an upgrade charge for the because uh, we have a service plan with Striker that basically if anything goes wrong with our stretcher, they come out and fix it free of charge. Uh, so there was a there was a price increase for that to add the power pros to it, and then I'm not a, I'm not sure exactly what all this last one covers. It's a it's a protect power load seven year deal. Um, I'm sure it's some sort of warranty for the power load that I could get a little bit more information from her on. But it was pretty costly. It was sixty one hundred roughly sixty two hundred dollars per power load. So I mean just for that on the initial quote of ninety three thousand nine seventy five. 18,555 of that was just the, uh, that protect power load warranty. So I could probably get a little bit more information on her to see what, what the difference between that is and what we currently have now on our stretchers. Because I would think with this, with the ProCare upgrade charge that putting the stretchers under there, or putting the, uh, the power loads under our existing plan that we have, I'm not sure why, there, why there's the, uh, the extra one there. Do you have to buy all three to get that? Zero percent. I'm not sure. I would have. I, I would venture to say no, but uh, but to give you a good, solid answer on that, I'm not sure exactly. <clears throat> How soon can you get some solid numbers? I could probably have them by this afternoon. <laughs> They're eager to get you the numbers. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, once you do that, because I mean, we're not the numbers that we had discussed. I think we were looking at one, but. Uh, there's a zero percent interest for three. I mean, we're not too far off, so yeah, I'd be curious to see what that is. Yeah, I, I can touch base with her to kind of see, you know, <coughs> what all that deal entails, and then also, like I said, get a little bit more information on that uh, on the warranty, <coughs> plus also kind of see what their uh, what their bottom dollar is on them. Any other questions? Did you want me to talk about that sim mannequin? Kind the of simulated one? The yeah, mannequin. the simulator. You can, yeah. Okay. We've got it on here, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty interesting thing, too. It is. Uh, you know, looking at this, another thing that we've been kind of looking at is, is our training, kind of how we do that. Uh, and obviously, like anything else, you know, we, we need some upgraded equipment. And one thing that we've been looking at is a, it's what they call a sim mannequin. And basically, it's a mannequin, it's full size, full weight, basically like an adult male, that it can do basically anything that a human body can do. So if you need it to cry, if you need it to have frothy sputum coming out of its mouth, if you need to put an irregular heartbeat, <coughs> if you need to make, you know, hear breath sounds on one side but not the other, I mean, and it's all controlled with, a, uh, with an iPad. 
So I mean, basically, you know, the person evaluating can sit back and can change things as the situation evolves. So it can, it can, you know, it can make pupils constrict and dilate. It can make an airway swell up you know, or constrict. So I mean, it's we whenever we went through our critical care course, we used one, and it was pretty neat because it was a big adjustment going from doing a scenario on your typical mannequin versus one that's actually pretty interactive. Because <laughs> normally most everything you verbalize, but now with this one, like they just kind of tell you, you know, as you're going through it, you just kind of, you know, you assess it as you see it. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of one thing, like I said, you know, we've been wanting to kind of beef up our training a little bit, do a little bit more, you know, I guess better training, a little bit more beneficial for everybody. And that was one thing we kind of looked at because we've been, we've been doing a lot of scenario-based stuff like instead of just, you know, going through your typical boring CEU course is actually like making people interact, you know, do scenarios, give, give, uh, give somebody a scenario and let them kind of go with it and see, see how it plays out. But it, uh, one of those, the, and I haven't got an official quote from somebody, but I've looked at some websites that sell medical equipment and uh, most of the ones I, that, that we've looked at have been anywhere from twelve to $15,000. Getting close there to it's pro I think it's that Sim Man 3G up there in the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It says request more information. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Yeah, th this is the one we've actually been looking at. Add to cart, yeah. yeah. What are we waiting for? He said, he said add to cart. <laughs> Have you guys demoed it? Do what? The only demo we've done is on the yeah. one, like I said, that we used Amazon. during our critical care course. <coughs> what Amazon and there were, there were several of us that went through that and got to use it. How many hours did you get on that? You know? For the critical care course? <laughs> yeah. I can't remember how many weeks we went, but we went every day. It was a, actually it was, it was the, uh, the Education Department of Aries Act. They had a regional educator that had it and he brought it down and uh, let us use it. Like I said, it's, it's different because you always kind of, whenever you go in and you're, and you're doing a scenario with a mannequin, you're just used to going in there and verbalizing everything and, you know, it, if you're wanting to check breath sounds, you have to ask your evaluator, you know, what your breath sounds are to where this. It's just like a, it's just like a real person. When you start your scenario, if you want to know their breath sounds, well, you listen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
incorporate critical thinking skills. There's no better way to train for the excellent delivery of ALS treatment. I mean, that wasn't very informative. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was quick. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Bob said add more. <laughs> but basically, you can, you can kind of see some of the stuff. It, does. it can, like around the lips and stuff, your side hose is like, I mean, it, it can turn blue around the lips and stuff. That. Nail beds, you, you can actually get, those, you know, pulse oximeter readings from their nail beds and stuff. So, I mean, it's just, it, it's a pretty neat tool. And like I said, whenever we used it, it was a good, uh, good learning tool to use. <clears throat> that was cool. Okay. Much different than what we did. Oh sure. That's the way these are. Like I said, you know, they, they'll tear up. Pupils constrict and dilate. You know, you can hear breath sounds. You can change the breath sounds. You can hear heart sounds, bowel sounds. I mean, starting IV on them, push fluids. I mean, it has, it has running fluids in them. So I mean, it's a it's it's a pretty neat little pretty neat thing. I know we uh, discussed that on the three to five year planning goes. Uh, so within that three to five year window. Also a uh, paramedic course, I know we talked about that too. So there's some, and, and these were, these were some good ideas. Uh, I think you got accreditation requirements too. To yeah, one, one thing is that we would probably be looking more at doing the advanced EMT course than the, uh, than the paramedic because paramedic programs have to go through an accreditation process, which Nobody in this area has done it. Even places that have taught paramedic classes before aren't doing them because I think it's very costly and it's and I'm not sure exactly what all it requires. Um, but we now we have a TEI, which is a teaching license, basically through the state. And what we could do is, is apply for a. It would be a different license. It would be a level three license, which is where we could teach anything from advanced EMT and below. So we could teach advanced courses, EMT courses. Um, <clears throat> And basically the biggest thing that we'd have to do there as far as expense-wise is, for one, get the license, two, um, get all the equipment because there's an equipment list for a class three or for, the, for a level three license that you'd have, to have, you'd have to have so much equipment. And then the other biggest part would be getting the instructors because we'd have to send people to, you know, the instructor classes and then they have to actually be monitored teaching so much stuff. So, I mean, it's one thing that's kind of on our radar. It would take some time to fully get it, you know, implemented and up and going, but... I mean, as far as the initial cost, I mean, it it wouldn't be a whole lot. Like I said, it, it's mostly just time consuming, just trying to get it all, you know, get all get the all licensing and stuff done, and and get everybody through the, get all the instructors through the instructor classes, and you know, make sure that they get all the classes, that they teach all the classes that they need to be monitored on, get all those done. So it would just just be kind of time consuming before we could ever be to a point that we'd be fully ready to put on our own course. But it, it is something that we've kind of looked at, obviously, with the paramedic shortage. You know, that's one thing that we've kind of looked at is, you know, how can we be a little bit more self-sufficient? And even if it was something where we didn't open it up to everybody to take, you know, if we had five or six people within our own department that were interested, we could teach them and, you know, get their license and get them out there and get them going. The expert over there. All right. Yeah, just get us those numbers. I will. I'll touch base with her here in a little bit. <laughs> she can get those to me. Anybody else got anything? All right. Appreciate it, Brian. All right. Thank you, Thank you Brian. The sheriff's starts on page two. It has had major changes. We, the sheriff and I met um, back last year, I think, or earlier this year. We talked about that we would put it into his more into the format that the sheriff's office was used to using. So um, I went through and broke that out um, to the best of my ability to, to put it into a format that both of us could relate to. His payroll starts on page 14. 14 doesn't have a page number at the bottom. And it goes through 32. It's 
So I'll just start down through here, and if if any of you all have any questions, or if, if Sheriff has any question as to how I broke that out or something, just speak up, please. Um, Sheriff's salary is ninety-seven thousand three hundred. Um, Deputy Sheriff's salary is eight hundred ninety-one thousand six hundred. Sheriff's clerk salaries sixty thousand four hundred. Pardon overtime fourteen thousand. Drug overtime twenty-two thousand. Federal overtime twenty thousand. Court overtime twelve thousand. Shift cover overtime seven thousand. Clef overtime twelve thousand. Other overtime seventy-eight thousand five hundred. Clef pay eighty thousand. Court security officer pay one hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred. FICA, one hundred thirteen thousand one hundred dollars. <throat> Retirement, four hundred thirty-nine thousand eight hundred dollars. Health insurance, two thousand two hundred fifty-nine thousand seven hundred dollars. Life, thirty-one hundred. Training fringe, sheriff training fringe, forty-one hundred. HRA, twenty-one thousand four hundred. Advertising, one thousand. Audit expense thirty thousand. Uh, B blood alcohol testing seventy five hundred. No, I'm sorry. Tech, tech, technical technology and software office seventy five hundred. VA testing five hundred. Pest control is under other buildings, so that's zeroed out. Emily, what, yes. are, you, what are you including in the, the uh, tech software? What is so that's. Um, asking I don't have my original like yours there. Is that this stuff here? Yes. Okay. That's, okay. So you got this somewhere else? Share that with with us. Huh? Can you share that with us? What uh, software and tech? Uh, what that seventy five? What you were talking about? Uh, what's included in that? What include that in the software that we have, such as our evidence uh, program, because we've got to have uh, the updates to that. that right. Cost. Uh, we do leads online. We do TL, TLO. Uh, leads online is the. Look and see what's been pawned. Okay. Yeah. Covering yeah. stolen property. TLO is where we can get phone record information. Uh, some of it is our uh, tax program, mm -hmm. and some of it is our program that we use to be able to use credit cards. Those type of technology things is what that is. Well, you apparently had a breakdown somewhere else that we don't have that includes that seventy-five hundred. That's well, what I'm used to looking at and what, what oh, she's got is oh, okay. just a difference oh, of the okay. way she's doing it and the way I okay. do it. That's yeah. why I was confused. And she's but got it broke out differently than I do, so that's why I was trying to figure out where it's at. I'm glad you said that because <laughs> I had no idea what, what you know, software, what yeah. you just explained yeah. was under that. Okay. 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 okay now. <laughs> um, admin expenses. Execution expenses, 500. Technology and software evidence, 2,000. Admin expenses, other miscellaneous, 2,500. Admin expenses for jury meals, <coughs> 250. That, I just wanted to denote this, that may change. Mm -hmm. 
uh, because the attitude of our Commonwealth attorney is, I want to take more things to trial so we may have more jury trials than we're normally mm -hmm. used to. So, you know, that's, okay. I was just basing it off what we've done in the past, which is not much, but if he takes a bunch to trial, then yeah, that's going to increase. Okay. <clears throat> That is something that comes, at least a portion of it returns back to you. Is that correct? It, yeah, it's, it's reimbursable. Right. Yeah. Right. It's reimbursable. It won't be, and just for the court's knowledge, because it comes to the sheriff first, it won't be something that we're going to e easily see that offset. It's going to turn it over to us when he receives it in return and excess fees for that month. So um, we wouldn't notice an overage in that to offset it until the in closer to the end of the fiscal year when he exceeds those estimated receipts. Technology and software, deputy expense, 8,500. Auto expenses for impounds and records, 2,000. Auto expenses for boat, 1,500. Deputy expenses for ammunition, 8,000. Office fuel, 100,000. Auto expenses miscellaneous, 200. Office expenses for miscellaneous office expenses, 800. Auto expenses for ATV, and I misspelled expenses, <coughs> 1,000. Office expenses for office supplies, 14,000. It's because we've broken it out. Broken it out, mm -hmm. okay. That's what, that's what I thought. <clears throat> okay. Auto expenses, tires, 10,000. Before we go on, I want to make note of this. Uh, talk with uh, David English. He has lost his state contract <coughs> licensing or whatever you want to say. So I don't know if that's going to change any or not depending on where we can get things set up again. If we can do it prior to, like we were doing it for David, it won't change. But if we have to do something different, I don't know if that's gonna change or not because of the pricing difference. If we have to go through Paducah for sales or somebody like that, it may, it may change. But I think we can get it set up the way we were doing it when Tim Dotson had launched an entire and it shouldn't change. And I think, I think we identified too that there's quite a few, uh, and I understand what you're saying as far as it might change, but there's quite a few vendors that have the state contract. So yeah. Locally. Yeah. They might be able to go through. <coughs> we anticipate that. Deputy expenses, uniforms, and clothing, 20000 Court security expenses for uniforms and clothing, 3500 Court security expenses for supplies, 500 Court security expenses, equipment, 1,000. Sheriff's bond, 1,500. Sheriff's deputy expenses, Wi-Fi jetpacks, 10,000. Office expenses for 911 supplies, 2,500. Office expenses for postage, 17,000. Office expenses for checks, 700. Auto expenses for repairs, 38,000. Deputy expenses for cellular devices, 5,000. Out of county travel for court security training, 2,000. <coughs> out of county travel for deputy training, 15,000. Out of county travel sheriff's training, 3,000. Deputy expenses for equipment, 10,000. Deputy expenses for radar, 1,500. Deputy expenses for radio, 10,300. Deputy expenses for supplies, 5,000. Their supplies, 2,500. Transport expenses for prisoners, 5,000. Transport expenses for minerals, 1,500. Transport expenses for juveniles, 250. Office expenses for office equipment, 10,000. Auto expenses for new car purchases, zero. Auto expenses for auto equipment expenses is 25,000. Okay, why is there nothing in there for new vehicles? They're in ABC. Okay. So, now, what was the answer to that? 
They're in the ABC. Okay. Oh, okay. If we, I'll, page 19, no, probably 18. So that's, that, to equip it is also there as well? There is for police and enforcement, policing and enforcement, which um, is what we used this year for the cars and the upfitting. There's 122,000 there. And then under deputy training equipment, there's 35,000, which is $20,000 for vests. Do, and, do I have that in, in this? Probably not. I'm sorry, I forgot to print that out. It'll be, it's up here. It'll be. You see that? <laughs> yeah, you got one there. You <laughs> what is that, 18? Yeah. Surprised no one asked about that we're equipping our deputies with jetpacks. <laughs> it wasn't. <him. laughs> So nobody asked what that nobody was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the things you fly around with. No. Good. Good. <laughs> Our insurance will probably go up. Not the George Jetson. <laughs> the deputy oh, training yeah. expenses is the $15,000 for computer updates. Where are you now? Under ABC. What um, page? 18. Deputy training expenses, 35,000. That's 15,000 for computers and 20,000 for vests that are gonna be expiring. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, we still haven't heard anything yet on that grant. And I don't suspect we'll hear in this fiscal year. Yeah. And we, I don't know that we've talked about this in the budget workshop, but we've really cut the ABC budget down this year so that we aren't in the position that we were. It's only $275,110 total. Obviously, we expect more than that. However, we'll amend it in as it becomes, as, we, as, it, as it materializes. Yeah, and, and y'all do know if we do get that grant that that's reimbursable monies that we can put right back. Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll have to front it and then mm -hmm. all that. So. Yes. Yep. Yes. Right. So, um, and those would be amended in too to be able to add to that. And. I believe this covers all of our anticipated administrative costs so that anything. Yeah, I think, and I think too, one of the biggest thing, uh, talking with Andy, is some of y'all's computers were the uh, no, some, warranty. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, hold on. I, I think expired in like 2013, so a much yeah. needed upgrade. Uh, yeah, quite a bit, yeah. quite a bit. Something there. Are y'all through with any kind of questions or anything? Because I, <coughs> I don't have questions now because of the, it's foreign to me to see this and put ABC with it to overlap. That's mm -hmm. and that makes up some of the questions that I had. Okay. So, and Desiree, is this for me to have or do you want that back? Yeah, you can have it. Okay, that. thank you. you staffed well that's that's another thing i want to talk to you about <coughs> and see if there's any way possible Is the front page that you see that was last week just for the sheriff's office that's the number of incidents that we had each day and typically that's the way our week has been running and I Jeff can tell you this because he had to, was sitting next to me when I got the email or the text message two and a half days we did 512 incidents that we responded to last week, just in two and a half days. And it's starting to pick the pace up. The next thing you have is what we did for 2016. That's all the calls that we did. And you'll see the grand total on the back page. We had 18,265 
calls last year that we responded to. And out of those 200 or 18,265, 18, we generated 18,265 case numbers. This morning, <coughs> from January to now, we're already at 8,781 case numbers. We're on pace to do 21,000 plus case numbers. That's actual cases that we do reports on, which means our call volume will be even more than that because we don't do a case for number for every incident that we do. <laughs> so we've increased by quite a bit. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to be somewhere close to 4,000 calls more this year than we did last year. So if there's any way possible that we can work in, I would request a couple more officers. And I've got the breakdown of what it possibly uniforms, vehicles, ballistic vests, and that cost right there is if I can hire on the retirement bill where there's no benefit package whatsoever. I've got one that I know is, is interested that would be a retiree, and I think I possibly got two. So that's going to cut our costs down tremendously because you won't have to pay out any benefit package whatsoever. If not, the bottom numbers down there, that's what it's going to be if we have to pay out benefits. That's on top of what is budgeted right now. And I would roughly about $60,000 more one way than the other. Welcome to here to here. Yes, these figures yes. right here from yes. 154,000 yes. to 212. Yes. Right. So basically, if, if I hire two that's not retirees and we have to do benefit dollars. packages, that's what it will cost. But I'm pretty confident that I've got two folks that are retirees that would be willing to come on board, and that's how much money we can save <clears> by doing that. And all we have to do is pay them a salary, and that's it. Now, this is the first year expense. After that, that expense goes down. What I mean by that is just salary from that point on. They <coughs> already have their weapons, their uniforms, and stuff like that. <coughs> and from our numbers and from the way we've run ourselves crazy the last two weeks, guys, we're going to need some help. That's just all there is to it. Either that or we're going to start running triple the amount of overtime that we're normally used to. I'm curious, the, uh, when we sat down with the budget committee, looking at the three to five year planning goes, none of this was discussed. Well, it, just to be honest with you, it wasn't on my mind at that time because I, I wanted to get what we needed right now to just sustain what we're doing, but... Uh, <laughs> In, in regards to the CADs, and I understand the CADs, I don't know if, if, if they understand the CADs, but is it not accurate? Because uh, I know I was told that in the past our dispatchers weren't actually entering uh, calls into the CAD. They're doing a better job of it, let's put it that way. But I mean, but, I th mean those, those numbers. But we, like I said, from 16 to 17, those numbers have picked up. Well, sure. In 16, they, they did a better job than they did in 15 on getting stuff entered in. But that's what I'm saying. We, we're, we're ahead of pace from last year. And, and, and I understand that. Trust me, I've, 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 I've been there with the eight-hour days where you don't get a lunch break. Uh, the, the thing is, though, is that it was identified that uh, in the past, not all the calls were actually being recorded is the best way to say it. 
Right. Uh, and in 15, that was the case. In 16 is when they started putting everything possible in there. And that's why our numbers are up the way they are. In the, but from 15 to, to 16, <coughs> If I'm not mistaken, it was a 7,000 call increase, and that was the reason for that. It's because they are doing a better job of entering it in. The, uh, you've got, you can reallocate your dollars in, in your proposed budget. It, 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 what I mean by that is when we sat down, um, and looked at the three or five year plan, uh, the dollars that are budgeted, I mean, you can reallocate what the dollars you've got right now. If it's, if it's these numbers here, you can reallocate those to where you can focus on hiring a retiree. I'm, Have you looked at I'm, that? I'm confused, I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're trying to say, I'm sorry. The, the budgeted dollars, that you have right here. Um, you've got the ability to reallocate those dollars to, if you wanna hire, hire somebody. And what do you mean by reallocate? Take something away somewhere else? Well, you've got, you've got, obviously they're under the three to five year plan, it was the desktop. Um, and I think we, we had a accreditation in the facility. Uh, and a speed radar, the mobile speed radar. Yeah, the, what I call the speed buggy, the trailer. Which we, we switched that out so we can get your desktops all updated. The computers, yeah. Yeah. But the, um, I think there's 122,000 that was allocated for, for vehicles. Um, you've got, I think, 2,500 is what the numbers showed for overtime hours, and I think the court up increased that to 4,000. I mean, you got some money there. We, we actually even discussed that uh, it would cut down on your overtime if you did reallocate and hire uh, a retiree or even a, uh, a new, new deputy that would cut down and save you some money in your overtime. And that's what I always try to do. But none of that was, I mean, there's, well, like I said at the time, I, I wasn't focused on that because the reason why I wasn't is because I wasn't actually out there working and it's bit me. <laughs> Basically what I mean by that is I had to work some extra shifts and stuff and just didn't realize <coughs> how, how far ahead we are this year than we was last year. I mean, I was gonna try to make do with what we had, but I don't, I don't see where we can. Looking at that, I don't see where we can. Are we going to have another meeting before the end of the year on this? The way I can, can kind of go back and redo some things and look at it again? Or is this something that needs to be nailed down today? In, in regards to what? I mean, for, to get the budget set for, I know you got to do two readings on it. I've got time to look and do some readjusting. I mean, this is the first time we're hearing this too. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think with the dollars that are there, you can accomplish what you want to accomplish, what you presented today. Okay. I mean, that you've got, I think in your, your budget, you've got the monies to hire a retiree. That's, to me, that's the cheapest route to go. Because all you're doing is a salary and that's it. You don't have any benefit <laughs> to go along with it. Pro, there, there are pros and cons with hiring a retiree. Well, if I know who they are and know their work, that's, that's not gonna be an issue. <laughs> What about a car for them? You're gonna have a vehicle? No, that's that's the <coughs> that's the next uh, issue. When I get this next one built and we're <coughs> trying to get it on the road, I will have one vehicle to use as a pool car. But 
if we can replace, then yes, I will have vehicles because I've, they're ones that are still on the road that's got age on them. Some of them are still pretty good vehicles, but they do need to be replaced and we can kind of pass them down. He knows what I'm talking about. Your, your newbies doesn't get the new stuff. <laughs> but it's good enough equipment, but if I can get at least two replaced for next year, then yes, I will have the vehicles for, for them to drive, and that takes care of that. <coughs> if, if I I'm just wanna make sure I'm following as far as what we need to, to modify if it's approved. Um, so the cars wouldn't ne necessarily have to be added into that? If on this sheet, right? Here. Yeah. If if we can do that, if we can replace through this budget and take the best of what I'm replacing, mm -hmm. then no, that cost comes down as well. Okay. Comes off. Yeah, that cost comes off as well. Thousand. And the one thing I see that that mm -hmm. is not on here is the FICA. We do have to pay FICA, but that's the only thing we have to pay on the contract employees. Yeah, and, and David's got that down there at the bottom. If you see it. Yes, yes. Yeah. But as far as if they are contract employees, it yeah. would add well, David didn't include that because he wasn't exactly for sure what the percentage for sure was. He just ballparked that. Mm -hmm. And he said he knew that that would be included in the cost. Okay. And with the expected overtime, how much overtime do you know that he was considering? He said he did it at 100 hours. Okay. And who? The expected overtime for? The two new ones. If we do ones. the two new ones. And that, that could possibly include, you know, be included in the uh, federal overtime, hardened overtime, which that's reimbursable monies. But he, you know, went ahead and, and did it a hundred hours. That's that's where I, I think your numbers are different from the presentation back during the overtime presentation. Uh, Twenty five hundred is what was presented, and the court approved four thousand. I think there's still some monies there uh, that you can allocate to those employees. Okay. I mean, that's, we, uh, I think 3,000 is what was suggested, but I think the court approved 4,000. That's why I say, I mean, there, there's some monies that already in, in your budget that you can still accomplish. Okay. Um, I just don't, I don't know if those options are being looked at. Well, that's, that's, that's one, that's why we're discussing this. That's why I want to know where, where do we need to go with it? Because, you know, I, we definitely need the help. And if we can make it work, I'm all for it. <coughs> the, uh, when, when we had sat down, this, this has been, uh, when pr producing the CAD numbers, um, uh, We meet March. Do what now? April. We met. We went over the budget. In, I, in judge's office. In, yeah, I don't. Our I, preliminary. Yeah. Over a month ago, I don't remember what the date was. That, uh, you know, a three to five year plan. I know the fleet, obviously the fleet, uh, trying to get those vehicles in and out of the fleet system, uh, especially in, in your line of work. I mean, a good vehicle is, is what's needed. I would love uh, to be able to do what Missouri does, but I don't think that's possible. But they cycle theirs out at 60,000. <laughs> It would be nice. Yeah, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think realistic, hundred thousand would be nice. And that's what we try to get close to as, yeah. we, as we can. And uh, now the SUVs, they can go past that. I think I can get one hundred and fifty to one hundred seventy-five out of them before they start doing the same thing those old Crown Vicks can do. Yeah, but I've got several with one hundred. Well, two hundred thirty thousand plus, and they're still stout. I know we had talked uh, last year, obviously with the drug problem in the county, 
uh, a canine and the advantages of having a canine. Now there's a price tag that comes with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's why I, I, I really think managing those dollars that are budgeted, you can actually, uh, I would think definitely uh, we could plan to, to fit that into the, the agency. Um, I know and you know that it'd give you more opportunity out on the interstate for interdiction and, and just the overall drug problems that we have in our community. Right. But, but uh, uh, that takes a lot of planning. How long are you take talking about uh, <coughs> needing time to go over those? We've got a budget workshop tomorrow. We've got one Friday. We've got one uh, the 19th. If I come back, come back to the 19th, then I could have a uh, better they, idea. I mean, look at my numbers and whatnot. Be kind of off a of late in the game, though, the 19th. We're about through then. I mean, I think, think, I think the second reason is uh, if you If you feel like it's there, I mean, we can. See what we can do with it. Yeah, let's let's sit back down because this is new. This is new. None of this was brought up during the, right. the initial. And like I said, that's just a ballpark figure. I mean, it's nothing that's in in stone. But that's just you know best yeah. guess. I mean, David, you come up with what would be needed, and if we can incorporate it in what already is here, then we we do that. That's not a problem. Did you know Friday? I hope so. <laughs> I can work on it to we, the end. We have a budget workshop scheduled. Can, can, can you tell we, me what out of the ABC will go toward we'll us? I mean, eight. Can yeah. you, because I know not all this here is, and that will help me. Okay. So the middle section right here? Okay. So this is, this is us. Okay. All right. That, that will help me to figure out what I'm doing. So the, the far right-hand column is the numbers I use, correct? <coughs> not, the, not the far, far right, not the shaded one, the one yeah. next to that. Okay, so $157, it's usable at eight. <coughs> correct? Mm-hmm. And right. we anticipate more b before the end of the fiscal year, but right. right now, yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else got any questions for him? All right. If y'all do have any questions, feel free to holler at me. 